Now this term Mera is interesting, interesting pronunciation. Tell me about it. This is a particular South Indian pronunciation. Yes. So yes. explain this to us. But it is derived from the Sanskrit word Mela, Mela. which uh, in the regional context uh, becomes uh, Mela. Mela. It is derived from uh, the Dhatu, Mila Sangame, which means coming together or combination. So, uh, in the context of Carnatic music, it refers to uh, the system of scales uh, that are formulated to organize the ragas. Uh, so, it facilitates uh, systematic grouping and categorization of ragas based on permutation and combination of swaras. And uh, how do you define a, a mela or a mela? Uh, melas are scales which have all the seven swaras in both the arohana and the avarohana. Arohana, as I said, is ascending. Avarohana, as I said, is descending. So, in both upward and downward movement of the swaras, they have all the seven swaras in order. So, uh, a scale which has Sarigama Padani, Sani Dapa Magari will be a Mela. And uh, ragas which are created out of this, you know, as we have seen earlier, a raga is more than a scale. So, scales translate into ragas. And these ragas which are you know, translated from the melas are mela karta ragas or they are also called as janaka ragas or sampurna ragas, sampurna because they are complete, all seven swaras, parent scales, parent ragas and there are 72 such ragas in Carnatic, Carnatic music. So it is that full fledged scheme of 72 uh, mela karta ragas which, uh, which has been devised in uh, Carnatic music and in each of these uh, 72 ragas you can have uh, other ragas being born out of it. You can have derived ragas or janya ragas. In fact, the very system of formulation of these 72 ragas is extremely uh, fascinating. Uh, you know, the riga combinations are 6 in number and the dani combinations are 6 in number. So, 6 and 6, you combine together, 6 into 6 gives you 36. Now, you haven't considered ma in this whole scheme. So, one set of 36 ragas with the first variety of ma and another set of 36 ragas with the next variety of ma. So, 36 plus 36 totally 72. So, it is so complete, so scientific and so perfect that you cannot find any, you know, uh, any, any error with that system or you cannot add anything, you cannot remove anything from that. Does Mela have an equivalent? Uh, in fact, it does not have an equivalent. Uh, I can say this is the proud innovation of uh, you know the South Indian musical tradition. You know South Indian musicologists like Vidyaranya, Rama Matya, Go, uh, Venkatamakhi, Govindacharya. It was in fact Venkatamakhi and Govindacharya who came up with the 72 uh, scale uh, raga system. And before that, it was Vidyaranya uh, who wrote his uh, Sangeeta Sara, and he was the first person to introduce the concept of uh, mela with 20 melas. And then with every, you know, chronologically with every succeeding musician in the evolution, there were more number of melas that were created. And now we have kind of, you know, it's, it's frozen. It's, it's crystallized with 72 uh, mela kartaragas. Hindustani system uh, got inspired from Carnatic system. Uh, Bhatkande, uh, the great uh, musician uh, in the early 1900s, you know, late 1800s and early 1900s. And he got inspired from the Mela system of Carnatic music and he devised what was known as Thart system. But it's only a miniature scheme with 10 Tharts. It doesn't have 72, full fledged 72 scheme it doesn't have, it's only a miniature scheme. So, Mela is Mela, Thart is Thart. Coming to non Indian musical uh, system, Western music. Practically, this is this concept is alien to the European musical tradition which does not have, which apparently does not have any recognized system for classification of musical scales. They do not have this concept of organizing, categorizing ragas in a particular order, a scheme of uh, you know, classification of musical scales, they do not have. So, if one has to understand a raga, it has to be mela only. So, it adds to the list of non-translatables. Very good. Yeah. I just want to thank Vrinda for an amazing uh, series. Uh, which will be extremely educational, very well received by a lot of people because people want to know these things. If you want to learn, you have to go to a proper school and a proper guru, uh, not online. We are not doing this online trying to teach you any of this. But in order to understand it, whether you are a performer and not, why not to translate, right? 
uh, because performers explain and they have yes. a bad habit of just oversimplifying. Yes. Uh, or whether you are a non-performer but a connoisseur who is just trying to understand, appreciate, like it, enjoy the music. Uh, how to explain it to people why these terms are not equivalent to what seems to be similar in Western music. Yes. That has been the purpose of bringing this uh, series to you. I would want to add one more point here that I know uh, if we are, as I even mentioned in the introduction, if you want to be a purist and if you want to retain uh, you know, these original terms, either you are considered uh, you know, backward or uh, rigid or sometimes you are con considered as an exclusivist you know, person having an exclusivist ideology. You don't want to include everyone and uh, you don't want your music to reach to the common man. You want to complicate it is what you know, it's the uh, common thing that is said. But uh, people fail to understand that we are not complicating anything here. It is just the profundity of these concepts. Uh, the uniqueness and the wisdom that is associated with these concepts, we don't want that to go a waste. We don't, as you said, we don't want to be over oversimplifying all these and you know, to, for a Westerner to understand us. In fact, he is definitely welcome. Let him come, we will explain to him. Let him understand our ethos. I would also say science Modern science is also like this. Exactly. Uh, you know, you have a certain pharmaceutical molecule and it's not that you are being rigid saying, okay, this molecule will produce this effect and this other molecule will produce a different effect. Right. And don't mix this one with that one because that might kill you. It's not because you are being narrow-minded. Exactly. But, but a particular structure has a particular effect. Yes. So, we have also got music highly structured. Yes. And it produces certain effects. All sciences are complicated. The pure science, if you look at it, and, they and are highly… Uh, the, the knowledge is Knowledge is structured. Knowledge of any scientific discipline is structured. Yes. And these structures have legitimacy. They have integrity. And when you pass it down, you explain the structures. The cosmos is built on structures. Yes, exactly. That is called the laws of physics. Yes. It's built on structures. Yes. It's not something you can just uh, make up your, the way you feel like. Yes. So, since this whole Nada, Nada Brahman onwards, yes. the whole thing is the structure of structure. the cosmos. Yes. And the, the human instrument is tuning into this cosmos. Yes. By, by doing this. Very true. So, therefore, the people who discovered the structures of the cosmos and how human beings through these musical structures can get in tune with the cosmos, you know, and, and experience the divinity. Uh, th therefore, this is, uh, this is important. Very important. And therefore, it is just protecting the integrity of, as a knowledge system. Protecting the tradition, yes. yes. And not letting it uh, dilute yes. and distort. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.